Woodland Springs, where young boys with big problems mend their lives and make new adjustments. Adjustments perhaps to a strained home relationship, adjustment to the keen competition of everyday school life, or adjustment to a community and society where wrong impressions make getting along with others extremely difficult. Camp Woodland Springs is dedicated to boys, kids between the ages of 7 to 14, from every section in Dallas. Oak Cliff, Little Mexico, East Dallas, and Highland Park. These are boys who need help, personal guidance, and encouragement in working out their personality problems. Camp Woodland Springs is a real boy's world, a haven of natural beauty and understanding, a place to develop the security and self-reliance every kid needs in the difficult job of growing up. And it probably has more different species of birds and animals than any comparable area in Texas. Yes, it's a boy's world, as full of adventure and excitement as imagination can muster. There are thrills of the anticipated, and exploration of the unknown. All dedicated freely toward helping boys find themselves in the complex pattern of our society today. Schools, clinics, psychiatrists, or various social agencies may refer a boy to the director at Camp Woodland Springs. Since the capacity of the camp is limited, recommendations for entrance are about 10 times the amount that can be accommodated. Before a boy is signed in at the camp, he and his parents are invited to come out and visit first. The director then has an opportunity to explain how the camp operates. He points out that Camp Woodland Springs is actually divided into small inner group campsites. These inner campsites are widely separated from each other and are guided day and night by two experienced counselors. These individual campsites are built for the boys themselves. They contain tarpaulin sleeping shelters and outdoor cook fire and shelters for crafts and eating as well as a small library. Within this environment, the boys have fun, sure, but at the same time, every activity serves as a valuable lesson in getting along with others. A lesson in meeting a challenge and completing a job. Campers pretty much get to exert their own free will, too. In fact, they are encouraged to do so, as a friendly and understanding counselor helps guide the way. The boys plan their own daily activities and do their own chores. If the group decides it doesn't like their present type of shelter, they get together and decide whether a new one should be built. If the majority of the boys agree, then everyone works together in planning a new structure, which is made from the rudiments of their own surroundings. Gradually, a boy begins to learn that his opinions and ideas count, whereas before he came to camp, they may have been ignored. A boy comes to learn the ease and joy of cooperation, whereas previously he may have been one to buck group activity. But more important, a boy learns respect, not only for the other fellow, but for himself as well, thus helping to overcome any feeling of inferiority, doubt, and insecurity that he might have. Finally, the shelter is completed. And besides having a new place to live, the boys have experienced the value of planning, working together, and the joy that comes with the completion of a job well done. But the job of rehabilitation is actually a slow one. Recognizing that boys will be boys no matter what, any discipline is usually a matter of reasoning and talking things out. 
no one expects complete adjustment overnight. And because each boy's problem is different from the next, some may stay at Camp Woodland Springs three months, still another may stay two years. It all depends on how the camp, as well as his parents, regard a boy's progress. Periodically, the boys plan long excursions. They may be away from Camp Woodland Springs for as long as 30 to 40 days at a time. By car or canoe, they travel great distances. Some groups have explored as far as the Cypress Swamp region of Caddo Lake on the border of Louisiana. Others have scaled the canyons as far west as the Carlsbad Caverns area in New Mexico. Still others have canoed 500 miles down the Trinity River to the Gulf of Mexico. In the excited preparation for such trips, the boys learn how to use a compass to help guide them in some of their exploration. And how to make weather predictions to determine clothing and travel conditions for overnight trips to nearby points. They also gather interesting facts on the terrain they plan to explore by going directly to the source of information, like the Army Corps of Engineers office, the Public Health office, Texas Rangers headquarters, and the campsite library. They also write letters to out-of-town bureaus like the State Highway Department or the local Chamber of Commerce. They assemble the information and post it on the bulletin board to show what inoculations are needed and get a brief historical background on the area. They learn the principles of water purification since they may be camping far away from civilization along the way. They also plan their food supply for the entire length of the trip and check every item that must be taken with them. Yes, it is through these meaningful experiences that the boys gradually come to appreciate the real value of learning. Good food is important to growing boys, so naturally the clean and modern dining hall, known to the boys as the chuck wagon, is quite a favorite building in camp. But not all meals are taken at the chuck wagon. About half of the time, the boys plan, cook, and eat out within their own group campsite. Here, thought is given to diet, proper nutrition, and food balancing. The boys check recipes and cookbooks and determine how much food they will have to have to serve their camp group. Each campsite is allotted a certain amount of money on which to budget their food. Deposits are held at the camp bank and are drawn against by signed checks, just as it is done with real banks in the city. So when a boy presents his menu at the trading post for his camps, he receives the requested supplies. Next comes the actual cooking and food preparation. The boys take turns being chef, getting help from a counselor when necessary. The proof of the pudding is in the eating. And do these boys like their own cooking? Well, I wish you'd look.
While the boys are cooking their meals, purchasing supplies, learning new things about nature, conservation, and safety, they perhaps are not aware of the educational process at work for them. But every day, they are learning practical principles of dietetics, biology, spelling, arithmetic, and all other subjects. Every little experience serving as a kind of school lesson, only with more meaning and significance. At Camp Woodland Springs, learning is related to first-hand experience. In an atmosphere that inspires thousands of questions daily, the campers learn to rely on their own ability to satisfy curiosity and search out answers. Within reach of all is a small-sized library containing the books a camper is most likely to use or be interested in. He may not read them at first, but after he has tested their value, a boy begins to accept books as his friends. Throughout all their daily activities, the boys are encouraged to practice tolerance, respect, and understanding of the other guy putting into use the principles of everyday Christian living. Every Wednesday, toward the end of the day, all the campers gather in the outdoor chapel for Vesper services. In the presence of the creator of all nature, the boys pause in silent reverence and commemorate him who makes all things possible. On Sunday mornings, Protestant services are conducted at the camp. Boys of Jewish and Catholic faith are taken into town where they attend services at their respective places of worship. The last thing on the camper's day is always the powwow. Here, closely gathered around their secluded campfire, boys and counselors evaluate the day. What new experiences have they had? What new thing did they learn today? How many of their objectives were accomplished? If any trouble arose during the day, they discuss it in a frank but friendly manner. By these nightly evaluation sessions, a boy can see his own behavior mirrored through the eyes of the other boys around him. Powwow serves as a clearinghouse for tensions and any misunderstandings. Soon, the camper gains new insights and attitudes, thus developing his character. When it is time to call it a day, each boy goes to bed free from worries and cares. He can relax with a proud, confident feeling of achievement. He's at peace with the world. As the stars and moon take their place in a beautiful blanket of sky, the wonderful land of nature prepares for the night. And the boy is alone with his thoughts. Gee, hasn't it been a grand day, taking that hike and all? I'll bet by tomorrow I'll be finished with that lamp base I'm making for Mom. Won't she and Dad be proud when I get to visit them next week? Oh, um, boy, I'll bet I'll really sleep tonight. Gee, but I'm glad I decided to come here to Camp Woodland Springs. Seven and a half miles southeast of downtown Dallas, Camp Woodland Springs is still incredibly far, far away from the cares and woes of city life. More than 200 acres of this beautiful forest land boast some of the state's clearest brooks and most dense foliage. Yes, son, Camp Woodland Springs is a wonderful place an opportunity for you and many other boys in Dallas to freely work out your problems day by day. It's a boy's world, all made possible through the support of the Dallas County Community Chest and the Salesmanship Club of Dallas.
businessmen and recognized civic leaders sponsor two of the city's leading sports events each year to help raise funds for the continuous operation of the camp. The Southwest's foremost professional exhibition football game held each early fall in the Cotton Bowl. And the celebrated Golden Gloves boxing competitions which thrilled thousands each winter. These classics are brought to and supported by the people of Dallas in a living testimony of their love and concern for the boys of their city. <laughs>